poppin' folks. We're back here for another major episode of Dynamite after uh, all uh, uh no full gear, full gear, and now we're up to Road to Revolution come February twenty eighth, I think. Twenty seventh. Whatever. It, this was at least uh informal episode of Dynamite to say the least. A lot of stuff happened. We had the notification that Shaquille O'Neal is coming to AEW into the chagrin of most people. You would think, oh my god, they're going to actually get a ratings grab. Shaquille O'Neal, he's a basketball legend. Why in the hell aren't people impressed? Because it's Shaquille O'Neal. The guy's been in more Papa John's commercials, State Farm commercials, and Shelvin Jones commercials. Like, no one cares. Like, Mike Tyson was there, and he was coming back into the ring. They did nothing with him except tease an altercation with fat Chris Jericho. I mean, I love Chris Jericho, but dude, come on, man. Showing your roid belly depression with your little sack titties, are, are, it's just not going to captivate viewers. Like, Hulk Hogan was, like, your age, and this guy still looks like he can be a couple guys in a bar. So we had... An introduction into MJF into the inner circle. We had Ty Conti with Anna J. That I thought that was part of the Dark Order. I don't want to get more information on that. Against Red Velvet, that was man that is managed by Brandy Rhodes. So the Nightmare Collective is completely I don't know relevant at this point. We open with Matt Seidel against the FTW champion Brian Cage. That it's good to see them more on TV. You bring more relevance into them. I think that we should take the belt away from uh, the FTW title away from Brian Cage, though. It's just not doing anything for him, man. I don't feel it. it it's it's not relevant. He barely defends it. There's no emphasis into it other than back then Taz did it because Shane had it because Shane Douglas was injured for most of his ECW title run. Sorry for that nerd talk, but that's the majority of what I got for you. <clears throat> no one cares. No one cares about Brian Cage's FD, FTW t champion. Especially, he only defended it one random time on Dynamite against Will Hobbs. There was a bunkhouse brawl match involving the Butcher and Blade with Anna J. I mean, no, Anne, Anne, Annie, Allie against. She's called the Bunny. Against, of course, QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, the match was pretty hardcore. Like, one badonked with what looked to be like a guitar. Dustin, uh, QT Marshall bled like crazy. Then you start doing random handsprings and cutters. There was a back suplex outside to the stage onto some kind of wood. And, uh... Running Senton. I mean, the only thing Tony Giovanni can captivate him, uh, Excalibur can captivate his well. Oh my god, look how ripped uh, the blade looks. What's wrong with you? You straight, buddy? And it's. You know, the match was okay, to say the least. I'm not, I'm not gonna, like, bash it over. It's a, like, a hardcore match, all because QT Marshall is basically irrelevant, and because Ali betrayed the. Nightmare family, and it, that's technically why the match even exists in the first place. But it, was, but it was entertaining, a little brutal. It, it was different from most of the other one on one matches we had, the, even though the Butcher and Blade were literally in a street fight with the Young Bucks uh, like a few a couple months back. Knight Seidel opened up, uh, this was over at Taz bringing up shots over to Darby Allen, sitting straight to see the FTW champion in action. Facing off against Matt Seidel that we don't know. He's only had like two matches on Dynamite so far. And he's was jobbed out to Eddie Kingston. He was Now he's getting jobbed out by Brian Cage. I mean, he did hold his own. Coming around a handspring. Uh, Hurricane Rana. Kick up Rana. Some knees to the face. Keeps pointing using that third eye. And he's like, if you want to like keep him with that dumb gimmick. Like, people are not going to know him other than, oh my god. If I'm born, got a man bun and a, and a beard now. That, that, that's what people are going to say. That's what they're going to say, man. And, uh... I, I gotta say that the match was fine. Uh, the cool spot with him catching him mid-air to hit him with that little driver. Oh, for a suplex position. That was pretty cool. 
Then uh, we had uh, later on Cody promoing it out of what's next after he lost the TNT Championship to uh, Darby Allen. Then it ends up with uh, some young lady that I totally forgot the name of, I swear to God. She, she was some black chick, well-built black chick. Coming out, if I can just look up her name, just give me Jada, Jade Cargrell, I think her name was. I, I, I guess she introduced Shaq over uh, mocking the size of Cody Rhodes and saying and, and scoffing that he calls himself, uh, he calls himself the giant killer. Then we had two black women arguing on the stage, ending up with her literally clapping her cheek. Her cheek, folks. Chill out. Uh, and then it ended up with Brandy and this car girl get, uh, car girl chick getting, uh, into a scuffle. That's practically it. Shaquille O'Neal's coming to Dynamite. We had, uh, Brandy Rhodes acting like, uh, in baby mama mode for majority of the promo. Uh, not that bad, and I'm not that enticed because Shaquille O'Neal, he's been in parts of pro wrestling, but he's only been the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. The person with the most wrestling experience out of out of Shaquille O'Neal's Floyd Mayweather, and for obvious reason he actually competed. So uh, yeah, Shaq's gonna be on AEW. I mean, I, I it's still gonna take a while for me to get into it. It ended up with uh, Brian Cage jumping Cody, Darby Allen literally with a jacket full of fun tacks and a bash and every uh, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage with it. Then Will Hobbs comes around scaring them off with a chair, Team Taz with a chair, and ripping his shirt. Enticing with, with, with the intents of this big black dude coming around random. He didn't even do anything. It's like, oh god, he's gonna throw Ricky Starks and Brian Cage around. No, he just took off his shirt and showed us. His titties. <laughs> like, have promos. Have vignettes. Like, AEW needs to do this stuff. Or else it's just going to be completely worthless, in my opinion. Because you have some potential guys. I'm not going to say, like, they're not terrible talents for everybody. Sure, they, these guys probably, so uh, like, did a lot for some indie promotions or something. But, by God, get vignettes. Make promos. Let them do promos. Interview them rigorously so we can have some semblance of character. Like, who else is more establishing Cody, Moxley, Jericho, MJF? Nobody else barely in the lower cards unless you're counting Orange Cassidy. And he's like a jobber gimmick and he's headlining pay-per-views with Chris Jericho. Ridiculous. That's just my opinion on the matter. Other than that, pretty decent segment. Next up, we uh, already talked over the bunkhouse brawl. If we're missing out on much, it would be the introduction into the MJF Inner Circle induction with Wardlow, <laughs> featuring Wardlow. Yeah, we had Wardlow and MJF, with MJF bringing up a speech, going over Chris Jericho's birthday and issuing a party with invitations. Switching the factor that he had no, like, enticing speech other than ripping off music. And uh, I got every, ripping off Drake, ripping off another song. Then they went over later backstage with uh, Sammy Guevara getting, not getting the invitation. Getting a sec, not getting a second email. That, that, so, we're going to go off to a casino segment again. And uh, I understand that they're trying to throw over the story for for MJF. I'm, I just, I don't feel that enticed as when I heard that he went to, like, that we had teasings of him making his own faction, even though we have so many. And then him joining the inner circle, and it's like, we have two captivating heels. Like, how is that going to, like, feed over... To Chris Jericho, like we we're gonna have like a power struggle. That would be interesting. And then you had him doing a dancing, a singing dancing segment in the steak dinner with Chris Jericho. Sure, it caught a lot of people off guard. Did it get people to watch? Nope. So 
why are some people bringing it up? Oh my god, you bring the positive. It's not getting viewers, folks. That's just not my opinion on the matter. If you don't get viewers, your segment sucks. It wasn't that interesting. It was mad corny. They they teased over just insulting the baby faces, and they did nothing to get themselves over, especially for MJF. That's like one of the guys that are not that established in Chris Jericho, but I had a but I have a lot of potential for. It, so I'm not giving up on MJF yet. Is and to many other sh- people chagrin that they do give up because of they're treating him like a complete goof. They're having these like BTE se- segments on like dynamite, and it just doesn't feel that enticing every week other than they're just going to say shit. Like, the chick said shit, obviously. Uh, Jericho, I know in the future, is going to say shit. Because, uh, of course, we're, we're st- we need to have a reason to keep our f- TV-14 rating. So we had, like, a mediocre segment, in my opinion. I like MJF, but by God, those were weak other than his hype vignettes over when he was returning from injury, when he was disrespecting Cody Rhodes. Like, come on. He should be... He should have more chasings of titles and, like, join the inner circle. And they don't do anything. They have no goal in mind other than, like, the last two months of him trying to join. So, next up, we have Scorpio Sky against uh, Sean Spears. And this is, like, an AEW Dark main event on Dynamite. So, uh, yeah, these guys have been feuding over teasings, harassing... Which, uh, Scorpio Sky in an entrance one time when they had a tag match with Jericho and Hager. Then uh, one time Scorpio Sky dressed up as a bear. They have their feud. That's that's about it. There's no legit reason. There's no story. Just a bit of weird harassment. We had a back soup. We had a sidewalk slam into a, a steel step. We had some. We had a springboard cutter. A few near falls. There felt like no enticing reason to watch this match, other than there was a glove. Oh yeah, this yeah he has a glove now, uh, he, where he hides some kind of hidden metal into a revealing part of the glove and then spikes the guy with it. Sean Spears win. That's at least something notable I get than just chopping up your wins in dark where you're like you're probably going to get some jobber. So yeah. We also had a segment involving, uh, what, the Young Bucks? And, uh, it was involving Team Two Flight that they'll challenge, they're going to allow them a shot at the tag titles. Woo, how enticing. So, uh, yeah, we have that. We had Ty Conti. That I gotta say, uh, has a nice backcourt if you understand what I'm saying. I'm joking, that's that's a bit messed up, but other than that, yeah, good looking woman. I didn't know what happened to Anna J. I don't know if this is her friend now, so uh, because uh, we know that and because we know that Anna J is part of the dark order, or at least something for her to do because she's part of the women's division. But, uh, yeah, it ends off a bicycle and bicycle knee to the face. We had average snap mirrors. This match was like 10 minutes long and it had no story. Like, Hikaru Shida, like, so many, like, the women's division is already irrelevant as it is. Other than we had new faces to see wrestle, we had Serena Deeb wrestle a nothing match. That, that's just my opinion on the matter. Uh, other than that, I can care less about the match. I really can. Like, tell me what happened. There was some spinning neck breakers. It looks like Anna J wanted her to cheat. She took the other way after a bit of a distraction. I uh, nearly had it, like, I think a full package ran by Red Velvet. And then she went off a knee to the face. So, uh, yeah. Ty Conti picks up a win. She has nice talent. I don't know what the dynamic... They're going to continue with her and Anna J. Even though, uh, you know, something that... Uh, uh, attempting to cheat with the, the baby face not trying to cheat. And she still picks up the win. You would think, like... Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not that enticed... Anna J and Ty Conti are pretty 
interesting women, and they at least look attractive from the majority of women that held the women's belt. That looks like a freaking penny. People made fun of the tag team titles from WWE. So next up we had Eddie Kingston squaring off like be grateful that you have the main event involving one of the two greatest luchadors at the main event in a rematch for the tournament of uh, the world title tournament. Ray Phoenix and Penta Zero Middle. They used to be Pentagon and then Zero Yo, I don't know man. I don't know. It <laughs> They change it nearly every month. So uh, our main event was that. We had Kenny Omega as well before we, I end up with the main event. Uh, yeah. Kenny Omega just was there. He was so minute. He was like, when is the cleaner? When, when, when's the cleaner from New Japan? You know, that's been getting like these five-star, seven-star matches. It's like, no one cares. We just want to see you in a singles run. 